We're getting into episode six, Enter the Nightbird of season two of Transformers Generation One. The Autobots once again find themselves in trouble, this time in a different way. So let's get after it. This is Energon Entries. Welcome to Energon Entries, everybody. As always, this is your host, Matt Freitz. I hope this finds you well, and I want to thank you for tuning into this podcast. As always, I've been having so much fun reviewing these episodes with you, and it has been fun to see this audience grow bit by bit every single week. We're getting into episode six called Enter the Nightbird this week, so let's get into the episode recap. The Autobots are called to guard Dr. Fujiyama's latest invention, a ninja robot named Nightbird. During the unveiling, the Decepticons attack and capture Nightbird, taking her to Megatron's base for reprogramming. Nightbird infiltrates the Autobot headquarters and steals the World Energy Chip, plunging the base into darkness. Despite the Autobot's efforts to capture her without causing harm, Nightbird's ninja skills allow her to evade capture until she is fully subdued with an Electro Mesh. Starscream, jealous of Nightbird's success, disables her with his Null Ray, leading to a Decepticon retreat. The Autobots return Nightbird to Dr. Fujiyama, who decides to put her in storage, though she leaves a lingering threat with a final menacing glare. The episode ends with the Autobots reflecting on the battle and the potential dangers of reprogrammed technology. So this is kind of a brand new concept in this episode because we have a new robot that has been introduced. And so that part is fascinating. But this episode begins when I was watching it, I laughed really, really hard because I honestly believed that the Autobots were just starting an episode by repairing the arc because it looked that way. Turns out they were building this new sort of security system that was going to help them know if they had intruders in the base. And to me, that's funny because Teletran 1 is a supercomputer who can do a lot of things, but can't seem to get that right. And so this to me is the Autobots recognizing that they need to be a little bit more proactive. But I did get the best laugh ever a little bit later, like not more than two minutes later when I can't remember who it was. It might have been Dr. Fujiyama when he said, is it possible that we're being eavesdropped on by the Decepticons? And I think Ironhide said, it's not too likely. That literally happens every single episode. And I almost hate using the word literally there but I think I've mentioned that in every single episode. And so the humans, more specifically, Dr. Fujiyama asked the Autobots to come help them at this unveiling to protect this robot. And one of the things I noticed is that Wheeljack and Ratchet, who are the two quote unquote smart people in Autobot headquarters, they're putting down human science. Optimus Prime kind of did that at one point too. I think he may have made a snide comment or it wasn't a snide comment, but it was a comment that was meant to say like, yes, their technology is primitive and it is primitive compared to them. But for robots that love the humans, I find they don't have a lot of respect for their attempts at bettering themselves. I mean, whenever they come up with this technology, it always seems like they have something to say about how it is inferior, which is funny because the technology that's being created could severely help them and always seems to help the Decepticons. So a little bit of a disconnect between the people that they are helping and the technology and all of that love. I actually really enjoyed that the ninja robot was a female, kind of progressive for the 80s if you really think about it. I think we hadn't quite gotten to where we are today where women feel a little bit more empowered and up until now every time there was a new robot it's always a male and there haven't been that many females in the show so something this powerful, this overpowered to be a female I thought was actually really really cool. And I find it's interesting because they have this demonstration of this robot Nightbird and have demonstrations ever really worked out in this show? Every time there's a demonstration of some sort, whether it's the Autobots, the Decepticons, the humans, something goes wrong. Something gets destroyed or it's interrupted by the Decepticons. It always seems to happen. Now, during all of this, this whole skirmish here, there's a ton of battling happening at this sort of like Omni looking theater thing. And Laserbeak comes in, guns blazing. And I mean, bursts through the ceiling of this building 
with reckless abandon. And he, I thought, was really small, but he kind of comes in looking like a giant airplane. But what got me is that he comes in with the sound effect of what I know to be a TIE fighter from Star Wars. And back in that day, you're talking about 1984, 1985, Star Wars was still big because the original trilogy episodes four through six were still fresh in a lot of people's minds. And so it kind of made me wonder like, ooh, I wonder if this is when, or this is around the same time when we heard a lot of these same sound effects in sci-fi-y sort of things, because I know I've heard that in a lot of different places. It just made me laugh and I recognized it immediately. So during this battle, of course, we have another fusion cannon saga because somebody, this time Blue Streak, is hit directly with the fusion cannon, goes down super hard. So it seems like we're back to the fusion cannon being overpowering. But as this battle is taking place, the Decepticons come in, they sort of take everybody by surprise, which is hilarious because again, they always seem to do this to the Autobots. The Autobots actually wait for the humans to evacuate, which again shows a lot of love and respect they don't want these humans to get hurt but in doing so the decepticons were pretty much allowed to do anything that they wanted and they did so and they just kept attacking 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 and in my mind i'm thinking it's great that they want the humans to leave because they don't want them to get hit by friendly fire but all this damage that's happening all of these giant pieces of stone that are falling from the ceiling could still hurt them so maybe they got to figure out a way in between that wasn't really the most sound strategy. But I'll tell you what was a sound strategy was what the Seekers did. And that was literally ripping the roof off the place just so that they could take Nightbird. I think that is amazing. The Autobots, not in a hundred years, would have been prepared for that. Honestly, could anybody have been prepared for that? But a great, great, great strategy by the Decepticons. But as always, they seem to always fail in their execution. However, they seem to have good plans. So I have to say that about the Decepticons. And we find out in this that they take Nightbird and they go back to this new place. And it's like, well, what is this? And it seems like it's a new base. And Megatron says as much, here our new base, like exposition. The new base has a giant Decepticon insignia right in front of it. That doesn't give it away at all, does it? But yet, I'll bet you, I'll bet you, the Autobots can't find it for some reason. Even though Teletran so far has been able to find a ton of different things that the Autobots didn't even know were happening. But this giant Decepticon insignia that cannot be mistaken for anything else is their base or is part of their base. And I bet you Teletran can't find it at all. Amazing. So the Insecticons are back in this episode. And once again, they're being put to good use. Now, I think I only saw Bombshell in this episode but he was using his mind control to control the ninja. Really smart, really, really smart, because that is a power that seems to have worked out pretty much every time that they have used it. And Optimus Prime, though, is back on damage control because they failed to protect this ninja, and now they have to go out and find it without actually harming it. So this is putting them at a disadvantage here. And one of the things that I really like is the Decepticons continue to be smart, they program Nightbird with a ton of information, including the information that Teletran doesn't know when an intruder is in the base. Now, the Autobots, I said at the beginning, had this new plan, this new strategy of what they were going to do, and this whole contraption that they had to make sure that they knew when there was an invader, and what happens? The ninja, being a ninja, climbs right over it, no problem, they don't even know it. And the ninja totally kicks ass. Like, I mean totally kicks ass, it was awesome. And the Autobots, they're, they, they have no answer for this. However, Mirage tries to fight Nightbird and gets punched in the throat. I didn't actually think that a throat punch would affect a metal robot, but it does in this case. And of course, Teletran gets, again, just knocked on his ass as far as computers are concerned in this episode. And Ratchet has to repair him again. And I'm thinking to myself, not only one, did you make fun of humans before, but your technology breaks all the time, and he must be tired of this, right? Must be so tired. So this whole battle takes place, it leaves the Ark, and the Autobots think that they have Nightbird. They shoot him with, I think, a Null Ray or something, and he goes down, or she goes down. They go up to her, and she gets up and starts kicking ass again. And no joke, Optimus Prime says, Roboto Possum? That can't be a thing anymore. I want to hear nothing like that ever again. That was cheese in the highest order and not in a good way 
And of course, Nightbird has a laser sword because any good ninja would have a badass sword. And when she takes out the laser sword, what do we get? Oh, we get the Star Wars lightsaber sound. I absolutely love it. But one thing I didn't get is when she felt trapped, she stole Optimus Prime's gun. They never really had a payoff on that, so I don't really know why she did it. It was a weird strategy, weird sort of storyline point, but hey, it is what it is. And as they're trying to find her, hey, guess who comes back? Hound comes back. Haven't seen him in a hot minute. He was a guy who was really big in the first few episodes. I really liked him, and then boom, he's gone. But guess what? They're going to use him for this two minutes here. And his two minutes is to use this like pinging radar thing that anybody could hear, probably from space, to go find Nightbird and somehow they sneak up on her. I'm not really sure she's been on her game this whole time, but this loud ass pinging doesn't tip her off. So they find Nightbird and they get there in Optimus Prime with a little self-deprecating humor on himself, which I have to appreciate. He has a little bit of introspection, which is always good. I just want to say this though. Nightbird the ninja is so very clearly more capable than any of the Autobots, even combined. I think she took on like 10 or 12 of them. This is one of the best creations the humans have made since the start of this show. And I think it's awesome. She is awesome. And during this whole battle, we find out a couple of different things as well. Cliff Jumper has a secondary powder of shooting some kind of gas from his hands. Not really sure what kind of gas it was. It began with a G, I think. And this might be one of the first times, at least in my opinion, or at least my recollection, that we have seen a secondary power from him, so that's pretty cool. Starscream being replaced by Nightbird from Megatron is like the ultimate troll. And it is so obvious to me that Megatron knows how to press his buttons and he trolls him. Starscream deserves it though, let's be honest. Starscream has done enough crap that Megatron should have kicked him out a long time ago. And so of course, Starscream trying to make Megatron look bad flies out of the base but he flew out of the giant insignia. So I'm not really sure if the base is the insignia or if the base is actually like in the caves that are right there. They don't really make that clear. Hopefully that'll come up in a future episode. I still wanna know why does Megatron keep Starscream around? I understand it from a business and a toy perspective, of course. They want to make sure that there are as many robots as possible to buy, but strategically within the confines of this show, it is a horrible idea. And this time, Starscream goes out of his way to ruin Megatron's plans and the Decepticons at large, which actually hurts him too, all because he's butthurt over a trolling joke. Amazing. And of course, the episode ends with a very, very, very 80s I'll be back moment with the laser eyes and all this other stuff. Guaranteed, we never see Night Ninja again. But overall, I liked this episode because I thought that the Ninja Robot was super, super cool definitely the most unique robot we've seen in this series but again another episode with only the og robots and i do think that i might need to actually look and hopefully somebody who listens to the show has looked this up or knows this i'm wondering if i'm watching it in some order that has been created since the advent of this show because it's weird to have all these new robots in this one episode and two episodes down now we haven't seen any of them and so i wonder if the app I'm watching them on, which is Tubi, is actually showing them in some different order. I do like that the humans are also trying to up their game and they seem to be doing so with every episode. And honestly, the Autobots continue to show their lack of preparedness because they were not prepared for any of this. And I guess to an extent, you could kind of understand that, but they really got to get it together. And of course, Starscream continues to be a massive problem. And we're only six episodes into this season, and I'm kind of wondering, is this going to continue to escalate? And by the end of this season, will there be a powder keg ready to explode that is Decepticon Camp? I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. If you have watched this episode lately, what did you think of it? Let me know. Email me, mattyicemedia at gmail.com is the email address to do that. I'd love to hear from people who listen to this show. I want to thank everybody who listens and everybody who has left a review of this show. It means a lot. Hope this finds everybody well. I hope this finds everybody safe. And as always, I will talk to you next time. This is Energon Entries.
The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Energon entries are those of Matt Freights and his guests and not necessarily those of the Matty Ice Media Network. Energon Entries is exclusively owned by Matt Freights and is brought to you by the Matty Ice Media Network.